Loeb Strauss was born today, February 26, 1829. He died at 73 in 1902. He's a German-American businessman who founded the first company to manufacture blue jeans, Levi Strauss and Company, founded in San Francisco, 1853. He was born in Germany and uh, made his way to America. He worked for several years as a traveling salesman in Kentucky. And uh, when he was in Kentucky, they changed his name. They gave him a biblical name of Levi. I was literally going to ask you where Levi, because you said his name was Loeb. Loeb. L-O-E-B. L-O-E-B, yeah. yeah. So they changed his name to Levi. And uh, he made his way out to San Francisco uh, during the gold rush in the 1850s. He opened up a wholesale business there, and he imported dry goods from his brothers in New York. So he sold things like clothing and bedding and combs, purses, handkerchiefs, those sort of things, tents. Uh, customers complained that the ordinary work pants that he was selling ripped too easily in the rugged work of mining. So he took and had some pants made from canvas, from the tents he had there. So he had some pants made out of canvas. Everybody complained that those pants were too uncomfortable. <laughs> it's like Goldilocks. This uh, bed is just right. So he knew of a French-made fabric called, and you know French better than me, S-E-R-G-E-D-E, N-I-M-E-S, so Serge de Nenum, Serge de Nenum, Serge de Nenum, yeah. Serge de Nenum which he Americanized the denim. Denim, okay. That's where denim got its name. So one of his customers, Jacob Davis, was also working on riveting pants at stress points because they would rip too easy. So Strauss and Davis got together and uh, with their new French denim and uh, decided to make uh, what we now know as jeans. And they patented uh, the process in 1873 and had a new style of work pants. They also, pat they also then started riveting the pockets because they would rip too, instead of just at the stress points. Stress points. They were first marketed as waist-high overalls. They became the most popular men's workwear. He uh, grew the company to be a multi-million dollar company. When he died, he never married. And when he died, he left the company to his four nephews. This I thought was odd. So he, he died in 1902. His estate was only worth, at the time, $6 million. Mm. I thought that was low. They said in equivalent dollars today, it would be $174 million, still, which still seems low. Still low for a brand like Levi, Levi Strauss, Strauss, right? right? Yeah. I guess he didn't. They said in uh, 1994, he was inducted into the uh, Hall of Great Westerners and the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum Hall of Fame. Levi Strauss. Talk about transforming not only... Um, the look of the West, but in fashion and period. Yeah. I mean, so here you had something that began as a utility or a utilitarian piece of clothing for that particular area, but it's because of the, the, the solution he came up with, rugged, durable, easy to keep clean, lasts forever or like whatever. What I was surprised about was the denim. I had no idea that came from, from France. France. Because it was always as if American jeans were the best, right? I guess we always thought the material was just some sort of hard cloth or canvas mm -hmm. so i didn't i didn't realize that was the uh that's a that's a good business category. birthday because talk about a um I, again it's kind of like uh when you had the roto rooter guy on or ruth crit like these are things that change like levi strauss changed a lot man that's yeah. well i you know and finding these birthdays lately I, I i do a little more research than not any more than i did in the past but i'm trying to find things that you and I'd be interested in versus the <laughs> CEO of Bank of America. 40 million bucks, yeah, salary, right?